Welcome to Unscripted with me, Grace Salame, filming right here at Radisson Blue in Aboretum. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, today's guest is one with many nuggets to share with us. He is an ICT champion, writer, university professor, and former PS, who has taken time out of his very busy schedule to come here and remind us that sometimes life may not go as planned, but it's always in how you keep reinventing yourself. Let's meet the amazing Bitangin Demo. Welcome to Unscripted with me, Grace. Like I mentioned before, we have a very special guest with us today. Mr. Tandemo, welcome to Unscripted. Thank you. Thank you so much for honoring our invite. It's a pleasure Thanks. to have you. Yeah. How have you been? How is life outside the public eye? Actually, it's beautiful. It is. You look great. <laughs> yeah, I get time to do all kinds of things. I exercise, do. Um, travel, a lot, and uh, mm -hmm. writing. And teaching. And teaching. Yes. Tell me about the exercise. I apparently we even disrupted your morning routine today. What do you do every single day? For many years, um, every time I went for my checkup, yes. the doctor kept on saying you need to reduce weight. <coughs> your weight is on the higher side, and um, the risk for this, he used to say, is you get hypertension, get diabetes, mm -hmm. and then it's very difficult to, to, do, to, deal, with to deal with those issues. Yeah. Then I said, I have enough time. Um, at the time, I couldn't consistently yeah. run for 100 meters because I was weighing 120 kgs. And um, of course, then I started uh, mixing, running, walking, running, walking at Parkland Club, and then I finished one kilometer. Okay. And then I said I would add one, I would add one. Nice. Um, it, it's taken me almost four years, uh, but now I do half marathon almost every week, but I do between 10 and 15 every day, every day and I play tennis. So, so you change your diet as well? Usually eat very early. And, and go to bed empty stomach. You eat 5.30, then we go to bed at 10.30. By then you are almost hungry looking for <laughs> cookies all over the place. So but you, you don't, <coughs> you don't, once you, you've done that after some time you get used to. Let's talk a bit about um, what you're up to now. Yes. You know that you're a professor at Nairobi University, but you're also involved in the you call it the fourth industrial revolution. I started early on, um, even when I was in government, mm -hmm. on issues around data. Mm -hmm. You recall uh, President Kibaki launched the Kenya Open Data Initiative. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that time we were just talking about data mm -hmm. as a very uh, important um, aspect yes. to decision making. Yes. You, we need data in order to make decisions. But the, then 2018 mm -hmm. <coughs> in uh, Davos, um, it was much more clearer when the fourth industrial revolution was ushered. Um, and uh, if you recall, we have missed, we missed the first industrial revolution when we had mechanization, you know, other parts of the world I introduce uh, mechanization where instead of digging with your holes and stuff you create a mechanized way of doing it yeah. they improved their productivity food abundant food we still import food mm -hmm. but we have the most land here um, because we didn't quite mechanize mm -hmm. we have not mechanized and as we talk about food security one of the aspects is how do we improve productivity so that people can uh, we can deal with the issue of food security then the second industrial revolution came around 1900 when <coughs> mass production if 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 you read the history of kenya's trying to make a car uh, <coughs> people argued especially media that it costs one vehicle was costing 50 million. 
It was costing 50 million because the production was very small and uh, it wasn't um, mass produced. If it wasn't for mass production of vehicles, productivity still would not have been high and uh, we could not be affording the vehicle, so everybody afforded. The third industrial revolution came with ICTs. And uh, I don't need to tell you how much productivity, because I think you can remember applying for the passport. Yes. You had to go to Nyayo House, get the form, yes. go fill the form, and then you are taken around the DC, the chief, the whatever, who signs and everything, and then you queue and other things. That has been killed. Today you do it online, you pay online. You <coughs> the time it takes has been shortened. I think the minister was saying it's going to take one day to do that. So every industrial revolution improves some aspects of productivity becomes easier for the citizens. The fourth industrial revolution has several technologies. One of them is big data. The one I talked about, data in the launch with Kibaki. Okay. Then we have things like artificial intelligence, blockchain, 3D printing, 5G. All those technologies will change our lives will they change, really the, they are already changing, mm -hmm. even in the media, mm -hmm. you are seeing changes. Um, <coughs> you don't, for example, uh, because everything has gone, the streaming is the, the in thing, yeah. you know, uh, content. content. Yeah. We don't have content. But if we stay uh, like mm -hmm. this, we will lose our culture. Until we also get into that space, we stream this content mm -hmm. and be, um, look at music. Mm -hmm. Music is one thing that I use when I teach innovation mm -hmm. with students. Mm -hmm. But then some, th they don't know. <coughs> when you tell them a few years ago, we used to have an album which you, you played and then it, we moved to the radio cassette. Mm -hmm. So I took a cassette to class and I said, what is this? They were looking at it, people <laughs> taking it, uh, and I was laughing. Then we moved to a CD, a CD. then we moved to Digital. P3 and then whatever, and now we are into streaming. Every time thing, it, such innovations brings disruption. True. We are getting into mega disruption with uh, um, as I said, some of these technologies um, which would completely change uh, the way we view the world. So what role are you playing? In so my role now is that these people have so much of your data. Do. Yeah? do we have regulations? Do we understand what, the, what else they are using this data for? Uh, this is what we are discussing in those fora. I, what if somebody misuses your data? Um, those are the issues that we are, uh, we are looking. Um, also as a professor and lecturer in yeah. teaching and imparting the next generation, what are you loving most about this season? Um, besides, uh, besides teaching students in the classroom, yeah. we have been doing a number of things on pro bono basis. For example, getting women to the university and uh, helping them understand entrepreneurship, you know? Everybody assumes that uh, you can become an entrepreneur. <laughs> and no, it doesn't happen like that. There are uh, motivations behind us that makes us entrepreneurs. There are people who plan to become entrepreneurs and they look for something. And they are it's not for everyone. Yes, also. and there are people who are pushed to become entrepreneurs, circumstances where you find your sister at home, ata unaka hapa uwesu kausa ata ata mandasi kwa kwa para para uko. Those are pushed. They never make money. They simply waste their time in that space. So what we are doing, we step back and say, um, for you to make money, 
as an entrepreneur, you must solve a problem. Indeed. If you are not solving a problem, you are wasting your time. Yeah. And then we take them through, what problem are you solving? And once you solve the problem, are you innovating? Are you improving that? Everywhere in the world, there is nobody who has a complete product. Mm. They start somewhere and then keep on improving. Yeah. We don't do that. If we are selling bananas, yeah. if I'm selling bananas, I don't improve it. Yeah. I keep on selling and more others come, then we kill ourselves. Mm. So what the question you ask, so what do I do if I've been selling bananas and more banana sellers have come? <coughs> what, you're su what you're supposed to do is you tell the others, bring me these bananas, I make banana smoothie. So now banana smoothie, there is nobody in that space. And once they realize that they need to do that and begin to bring blenders, you say I'll make banana bread. You know, you have moved to another. Welcome back to Unscripted. Special thanks to our location today, which is Radisson Blue here at Aboretum. This is your first time, sir, isn't it? Well, I've come here yeah, a couple of... I, I speak in many, many conferences. Oh, I've, I've come here. It's a good, beautiful place. Isn't it? Yes. It's very lovely. Mm -hmm. um, now, let's talk about transitions. Mm -hmm. um, coming from being a permanent secretary, and then you're not reinstated. Um, how was that like for you? We took a lot of risks in, in that office to do what we did. Yeah. The cable, M-Pesa, you know, all those things. Um, I, I kept on saying, if it gets worse and I'm fired, <laughs> I still have a fallback at the university. So in my head, um, that was uh, in, in my head that so if I am fired, I will go back to teach. But I didn't know how it would feel, how did you feel? until the day I left mm -hmm. and then woke up in the morning and my phone was like it died several years ago. <laughs> Couldn't it was completely silent. Co nothing, nothing. And I said something is terribly wrong here. Mm. But I said maybe I put it off last night so I put it on again and stuff, nothing still. Um, Whereas the day before, your phone would ring off the hook? Oh, yeah, everything. Lunch, when I, when are we meeting? That's why I had so much weight. <laughs> <laughs> you had many lunch meetings. <laughs> lunch meetings. So, uh, and I said, this is strange, you know, first, second day, third day. So I said, let me do a small survey people who have retired, fired, what not. You engage them. Uh, yeah, find out. <laughs> I said, oh, you didn't know? You have no friend. All the friends were friends of your office. So you should proceed. So uh, for me, it was easy. I went to see my chairman at the university. I said, give me classes. I want to teach, you know? So I started teaching. But the... The experience is actually frustration, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, you sort of uh, wonder uh, that life is like that. Mm -hmm. um, but what I discovered from the questions is that a lot of people end up depressed, mm -hmm. and you get into depression because you had all this attention, and suddenly there is no attention. Um, obviously, you are you would feel something. Mm -hmm. But uh, quickly I got into writing, um, I got into uh, speaking con conferences and other things mm -hmm. um, to get myself as busy as I was. Um, then that really helped. But there are people suffering out there mm -hmm. um, if they didn't have anything to do. But I have to ask, what does it do to the male psyche or ego when a man sort of derives who he is from what he does, the role he plays? Um, what did that do to you? And what would you tell someone at home who probably has been retrenched or has been fired? Um, what would you tell that man? Actually, life doesn't end. Um, 
And what I've discovered over this period that I've been out of government is that leadership, you can create it. Um, you can create it in your, <coughs> in your own way how you look at it. Yeah. Um, Professor Wangari Madai uh, won the Nobel Peace, Peace Prize. Peace. Um, nobody hired her to yeah. go around and talk about the environment, um, especially now when we are suffering yes, with global it warming. now, yeah. global warming. Um, and uh, the satisfaction I got from um, talking to young people, mentoring them, uh, talking to women groups, mentoring them. Um, it's, it's like so nothing you can ever experience. I mean, you feel satisfied. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you grow up, you are ambitious. You want to become president of this country and other things. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be president to change the world. I read somewhere you have a very interesting yeah. love story with your wife. Tell us you, how you met and how you knew she was Well, a well uh, <laughs> I don't want to repeat this here. When I grew up, yeah. uh, it, it, because I didn't have a lot of money, like my friends mm -hmm. who used to have motorbikes and other things, um, and there are some things I didn't say, that I would go to discourse with them okay. and uh, no, no woman would remember my name, okay. by, but she would say, they would say I was dancing with so-and-so's uh, uncle or cousin. Why is, why is that? Uh, because this other person, mm -hmm. uh, the family is prominent. <laughs> I was dancing with, like I say, um, you go and then you tell someone that I danced with uh, Grace's cousin because Grace is a well-known personality and other things. Okay, so that happened uh, to you when you were Yes, and it used to bother me that I wish they would know me. me. Yeah. It's just me, exactly. you know, and stuff. So, uh, and when it came time to find this girlfriend, I mean those one, you are dancing, they country, they are chasing the guys who have money and other things. Um, so I said two incidences, although there were many incidences where I tried and uh, they completely failed. I mean, like at the cinema, you go and <laughs> say, can, can I borrow a motorbike for someone? Can I give you a ride on this? And say, oh, no, thanks. Well, they know you borrowed anyway. And then, uh, so what should I do? Okay. So one time I fired this motorbike and she was waiting at, at, at Kencom. And I said, let me lift the front. Mm -hmm. I lifted the front wheel up, you but I, I wasn't very experienced. Uh -oh. fell out of it refused to come down. Oh, I'm so sorry. There was, Actually, if you look at international live house, yeah. or the ground floor, they have put tumors there. Uh -huh. There were never tumors there. It was all glass, uh, Bank of Chicago. Uh -huh. Whew, went inside. So and this woman is here laughing at me, and I think this bugger is trying <laughs> to do things. So um, another was, I went to church. Yeah. A target so there, a nice yeah. target. So I said, yes. this is what I will do. There is a, a cologne, I know you don't know it. I don't tell me what I mean. Brut. Yes, yeah. I remember See Brut. It. Uh -huh. I bought a small can okay. and sprayed the whole of it on my body. Okay. And I went and sat next to the... In church? Yes. <laughs> she did not look at me. I not even smell and say, this is nice. I don't know whether it was it's smelling. Much, I was very really disappointed and I'm so, so shenanigans here yeah, I went to study <coughs> in the Traveling US. Goodness. Yeah. US women are aggressive aggressive and it never has happened to me. A woman approached me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I said surprised. this is, this is this is strange. But I knew that um it won't work because I'd been looking to my father 
how he was domineering, you know, uh -huh. to his wives, know. yes. Mm -hmm. I said, if I take this Muzungu, Atakuana Nituma Kupika Pika Apananini, so I said, this is not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So uh, I came back. I came back uh, after I finished my undergraduate. I was working then. Um, and I said, I'll go find a woman at home one week. Yeah. And it's been 27 years? 30. Oh, 30 years? Yes, yes. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah. What's the, the secret, if I may ask? Well, um, the, formula. It, the, the, there isn't a formula. There isn't, a, there, there isn't any formula, but uh, you simply have to understand one another, to study uh, one another and uh, be um, overreactive on issues. But r people overreact on, on things, you know, before you understand what was going on through your head. Finances is another thing. Um, I think she knows everything I, I have. Uh, if she asks more than that, I would say maybe she has to go to hospital. <laughs> <laughs> You're an open book to each other. Because yes, yeah, you, you have to be transparent. That's yeah. true. Yeah. So yeah. what tip would you give to the younger generation who are probably planning to get married, someone's the looking for a suitor, or those uh, that don't, yeah. they don't make it two years and it's just not working? What can you tell them? I have seen... Um, I actually, a lot of these techies I deal with, um, they they have been messed up with online. You know that I can find you dating sites and stuff. Those are nonsense. They are con people. There, talk talk talk, <laughs> talk to someone. T talk to someone, and and you 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 would find the person you like. And I've seen also, I saw something this weekend that uh, the lady talking about, I can find you um, a suitor. A suitor. Uh -huh. um, it tells you there is a problem. And, and the problem emanates from how we bring these people up. Mm. Um, if you encourage them, you give them confidence. Yeah. And uh, of, of course, we can't go back where we came from yeah. that we fix we come and I talk to you about your daughter and exactly. I talk to my son and then... Uh, uh, well, sometimes it works. They do. Uh, they do work. The divorce rate is much lower. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if we... I, I don't think I can pick for my daughter yeah. or I can pick for my son. Yeah. Uh, that's for them to find. I can encourage them, yeah. uh, but let them choose by themselves. Yeah. I like that you brought up your children. Um, mm. What tips can you give in terms of parenting and lessons learned? It is a very difficult thing. It is. It's a very difficult thing. Um, there is, a, it's sort of a theory. I think it's Ali Masrui. It's been discussed. Abundance, abundance um, is one of the biggest enemies um, in bringing up children. If, if, if everything is accessible, um, they probably would, would not figure out how to live on their own. Sure. And um, I watch um, my best journal is Animal Planet. I mean, it's, uh, uh, I watch animals a lot. When a leopard grows up, a young one, they have to make sure that that young one is able to kill. And once they have killed, they walk away forever. Mm -hmm. um, the circumstances have changed here that um, we can stay with our children in the same room, in the same <coughs> house for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Ideally, we need to read from other parts of the world. When you are 18, yeah. you need either to move out or pay rent in that house. Yeah. But we keep on arguing, oh, akuna kasi, akuna, but that's where we mess up. Mm -hmm. uh, when we came to Nairobi, I mean, people like us, mm -hmm. we had to share a karum, yeah. you know, and uh, see how they... Yes, yeah. So a tinge of 
a tinge of scarcity to the children would help build them a, a tinge of it. Indeed. Mm. Thank you for that lesson. Yeah. I will definitely take that yeah. and run with it. Um, we'll be right back, right here at Radisson Blue. Keep it stay tuned, unscripted. Welcome back to Unscripted with Mr. Ndemo. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank and, you. Um, just sharing all those nuggets, you've given us many life tips, Nashkuru. And to imagine that you're now 60 years old, mm -hmm. um, the second half of life, and you're nowhere close to slowing down. In fact, you're doing more. I even learned that you started coding. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about, um, I mean, one, it's impressive. Why are you coding? And why is it important for, for someone to just keep going at it and not slowing down? What does that do for you? The reason why I'm doing uh, what I'm doing at the moment is uh, almost the entire world associated me with ICTs. True. And I didn't study a lot of ICTs. Mm. There's only one of my masters, which was in Special information system. systems. And um, the languages that I, we studied then yeah. are different. Uh, are not in existence. <laughs> you know, when you tell these young people that, oh, we did Fortran, and they say, what, what, what did what you say? That? They don't know what. And uh, because I sort of understand um, why, uh, then I had to go online and understand um, that. Um, and partly to demonstrate that much there is much that you can learn yeah. without paying fees. Yeah? yeah. Uh, is, uh, you can teach yourself. Yeah. My, my son wasn't doing well in math, <laughs> and, and I put him on something called Khan Academy, and boom, he did he well. Did. Yes. So, and I stopped, you know, bothering him. Mm. After two years in college, I asked him, what do you what are you going to major? He said, of course, math and, no the, co way. and the computer science. And he didn't and like that <laughs> once <laughs> before. He had asked me when I, and said, Daddy, you know, uh -huh. you can ask government to make math optional. <laughs> and I said, why? Because it would mess up our exams and whatever <laughs> in, in KCSE. Now he's a totally different human being from hating it. And I used that to talk to many girls' schools. Um, some are doing very well now. Uh, that the fact that they are, you have motivated them, that anybody can do it. And if you don't have the good teachers, they are good teachers online. They can teach you. I love that you are talking to girls, mm. you are teaching women entrepreneurship. Yeah. Tell me about that and going back to um, to help the girl child. What has convicted you to do that? So I was brought up by a woman. Mm. My father died when I was very young, uh, seven years, mm. and she she never gone to school. Okay. Um, but she she worked on us, um, and uh, I would say she had a lot of wisdom mm -hmm. um, because. Um, we, we used to try to cheat her that we are learning, mm -hmm. uh, reading at home, and then she would come and smack you and say, Soma, mm -hmm. you know, and say, how did she know this? Um, she's the one who taught me a lot of psychology. You know, I used to be um, naughty, and she, she, naughty she would punish me properly. Yeah. But she discovered I knew when she's about to mm. to get me, mm -hmm. and then I would stay far. Mm -hmm. Th these are all psychology, you know. You it's know, she comes and uh, praises you and the points so that you come near. And I studied those, uh, but my other siblings who used to be caught very easily. So, um, and I credit most of that to her. And I said maybe most women need to know such. I'm allowed you to speak um, on the essence and yeah. value of hard work. Yes. I feel like, especially in our generation, there's a lot of 
quick success or yes. any entrepreneur and do this mm-hmm. and make my money like um, whether it was Facebook or WhatsApp or Zuckerberg yes mm-hmm. we have those who have made it big but there is value in hard work and building yourself you were in, mm-hmm. in America and you were working doing odd jobs mm-hmm. and got into government and now you're still at it at 60 mm-hmm. so talk about the essence of hard work and the value one gets from it then as I said be, earlier mm-hmm. that in entrepreneurship the biggest opportunities are where the problems are. We have plenty of problems that if we decided to be rich, we'd begin to solve the problems that are around us. And uh, if people understand that, then they don't need to be seen that they are working hard, but they are not making anything. I've been trying to contact governors, and, and uh, I want this thing I was telling you, Fourth Industrial Revolution, to start it without them knowing they are doing it. I, um, I, exactly. I went to Moranga and Kiambu mm-hmm. and discovered that uh, they cannot compete with the eggs from South Africa. And they are just here. Actually, you can put the eggs on your head and come to the city, mm-hmm. but they are not able to compete. And the reason why is that we don't have developed supply chains mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have things like aggregation points so that you minimize costs and then you are able to compete, you know. Those are very simple things. But you actually need people to understand and bring them together. Um, but you find the, the cooperative movement has been messed up by very few people. That when people see a semblance of cooperative, they, they fear and they work on their own. You can't work on your own and succeed. True. Yeah? Uh, because when they bring three trays to Nairobi mm-hmm. uh, to sell, or two trays, that is 300 bob. Mm-hmm. Um, if you divide by the 65 shillings per neck, mm-hmm. uh, you are done because the cost for feed will be five and you are selling at 10. Mm-hmm. Then you are messed up. But even the governors don't quite understand it. Um, So we are moving to another level where we want maybe to recruit directly and uh, and be able to build those systems. Um, And I believe universities should work very closely because we do a lot of research. But that research is read somewhere else outside the country. Mm -hmm. We need to simplify it for people. If I'm able to succeed in that, I'll be very happy uh, with it. Yeah. Then, then you actually reduce the amount of work they are doing. They have been working smart and they are making money. Two things. Mm. What's your greatest fear and your greatest lesson? There is a lot of fear. Um, and I, I, I will tell you honestly that uh, God has been good to, to Africa and given us a lot of time, but if we don't deal with the issue of unemployment, whether you have money or you don't have money, you are at risk. Because if these young people don't get jobs, they will come for you. Um, That is the greatest fear. We can actually create jobs. We can. And I've alluded to it when I've, I've said that we can create value mm-hmm. out of things that are being wasted. Mm-hmm. And that is where the jobs come from. We can create value in creating ecosystems mm-hmm. where people can share knowledge and do and work smart, mm-hmm. you know. But we don't get such space to do that unless you, you volunteer yourself mm-hmm. to do such a thing. But I would want the policymakers to actually look at it much more seriously. Um, a place like Consa, for example, it was meant to be an ecosystem. In an ecosystem, you actually learn from others. You see now Rwanda has gone very advanced to a smart city that they are building. Uh, every other country is actually doing the same. We actually gave. Um, I remember when the president, the prime minister of Ethiopia came here, uh, former president told me just be 
give them what we are doing. Yeah. So we gave them the blueprint for Konza. They went, then and, they went and implemented Hawasa. Hawasa now is contributing to more than almost 60,000 jobs, looking to, to 200,000 jobs. So sometimes we, we, we don't finish things. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we need to finish such projects and seriously go back to the Vision 2030, look at what we said about value addition, mm. and begin to grow a manufacturing sector. And the government must create incentives in that space because taxation has pushed several companies into neighboring countries. Yeah. Um, we need to do something so that we retain the manufacturing in this country. The lesson is that uh, um, in spite, I mean, everybody makes mistakes. Um, in spite of all these mistakes, um, the secret is to actually um, learn from the mistakes and gather yourself and begin again. Very, there is a chance. I say life is like darts. Yeah, you throw and you hit on the wall and it comes in, but one day you would eat hit at the at the bullseye. What is your life motto? Keep on going. Um, it, I never get disappointed that um, uh, this, I've lost this, mm -hmm. and I usually say, um, God didn't plan it that way for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, because the reason why we have such things as depression mm -hmm. is when you say, I have come to the end of the world, mm -hmm. and there is nothing I can do. Then you, 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 you just fizzle out from there. But if you know that uh, this has happened, watch an Ijaribu tenor, you know, keep on going. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate sir. your time today. Thank you. We appreciate you have a very busy schedule. I know you're yes. off to France. Yes. Um, and changing the world. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing your thank story. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Uh, to those watching at home, thank you so much for making time for us. Special thanks to our Vacation Magazine Blue for hosting us. Until next week, goodbye and God bless.